Chef Fabio Viviani. Ciao Fabio! Cheers. Okay, this is the show. We're gonna teach you how to make one recipe, food, with certain ingredients. And this man is gonna teach you how to make one drink featuring at least one ingredient that I'm using in the dish. I did not know that. Yes, because I'm gonna come up with all kinds of good dishes and if you are an awesome bartender, you're gonna teach us how to make a drink. I'm very good at drinking. I don't know how I'm good at making it, but we'll try. So what are you doing tonight? I'm gonna make some quick and easy roasted potato. Like the one that my mom oh, is doing. God, I was eating them all the time. They're good. Oh, God. They're really good. Now, I, I need, see if I, you're good like her. I need a little help. First of all, I need Ten. to peel some potato. So, oh, I'm a pro. Can you help I'm me with pro. that? Can you tell that at our restaurant, somebody, somebody else, else peeled the potato, potato for us? <laughs> yes. Okay, so the first things we do here is a little pancetta, okay? Now, we're gonna make potato for four normal people or for two Italian. Now, the pancetta needs to be diced, just like this. Now, pancetta is like pork belly, just much better. Pancetta is where bacon wants to be when it dies and go to heaven. Now, this, it's a good Italian extra virgin olive oil. Now, the pancetta goes in a saute pan. What I'm using here is a good, really good non-stick pan with a lid on it. Pancetta to it. Then, we're using some sage. Just like that. Hmm, sage. Sage. I think that's what I'm gonna make my drink with. You wanna sage. use sage? You wanna use sage? I'm gonna use a little bit. If you leave me some, I can make something I'll for leave, you. I'll again. leave the sage right here. Beautiful. The Such sage is for nice you. Man. Then, we're gonna need some roasted garlic. Lots of roasted garlic. An incredible amount of roasted garlic. And then we're gonna press it like this. Why you do that? And the reason why is because garlic has a lot of like garlic oil inside and flavor that if you crush it it's gonna come out without necessarily making your wife refuse herself to kiss you ever again so we do all this before we turn on the fire before we turn on the fire because you don't want nothing burning while you're adding all the ingredients and then we're picking up the rosemary and now we turn the fire on the very, very important things you need to do is the potato, they need to cook before they crisp on the outside. So a good way to do this... Let me do something here. Okay, fine. I want to help you. Then a good way to do this one is to don't cut them too big. Is that good enough? That's fine. There we go. Now, if you see this, these really need to caramelize. Once the garlic and the pancetta is rendered, we are going to add the potatoes and cover them with the lid because the heat from underneath will crisp the pancetta, the garlic and the herbs. But then the steam created with the lid will actually cook the potato, release moist and kind of steam them a little bit. We're going to add our potato. And another Huge amount of extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil for a roasting potato is the best. So why you add it a little bit before and then after? Before to give the chance to the herbs, the garlic, and the pancetta to crisp. After now, because I need some moist on the potato, and extra virgin olive oil is the best I know. Salt and pepper, very important. There's not many that hold the salt like I do. You're right, you're a great salt holder. That, it looks already yummy to me. Yeah, but you know, they're not ready yet. Now, we need to cover it and turn the fire to the max. How long are you gonna have to stay like that? I might be able to make a drink in a while. You're gonna make a drink in a while. And of course, any good Italian recipe feature three things. Love, passion, and a wooden, <laughs> and a wooden spoon. So today, we're gonna start with having like a couple of a handful of cucumber. And I'm dicing it fine enough so we, it's gonna be easy when we're gonna model them or use the mortar. Ah! Sorry. 
See, that's what, <laughs> just, happened. that's what happened when you're a bad kid, you know? You just burn yourself, I was cleaning you my kitchen. I was cleaning. Are talking. We are working with a phenomenal decor kitchen here. And we are, uh, uh, I just burned myself cleaning the kitchen because I want to keep it clean. I like the... Okay, cool. let me explain to you. So we're going to have a couple of handful or can I say a couple That's... of big pinches of cucumber. This looks like a big glass to me. This is a pint glass. So what we do, as you can see, I'm taking in pieces the sage because... So raw sage? To... Yeah. Raw sage, yes. We'll take it in pieces because as Fabio will tell you, the sage will release all the essential oil and it just and it will smell so good right away before you can even start modeling it. Okay? So Fabio, now we have sage and cucumber in the mix. Then we'll add a little bit of sweet and sour. What's sweet and sour? The sweet and sour is a mix between okay. sugar, exactly, this one right here. A mix between simple syrup, that is sugar and water, 50-50, 50-50, and fresh lemon juice. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the sweet and sour and we're gonna take around two ounces. So two ounces are around four tablespoons. Okay? So now we take the muddler. So while the sage and the cucumber are taking the, the are giving the flavor to the sweet and sour, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get ready with my beautiful martini glass. Very easy, two easy steps. You have a little slice of lemon. You'll see why. Because I'm gonna take the glass <clears throat> and I'm gonna dip it into it so I so can, can I do it absolutely. So you got like this, right? Exactly. And then now you just gently dip it in sugar. And you, 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 you oh, look at you! Now we have our sugary martinis. What I usually add to it, dice the, slice the cucumber. We're gonna also add yes. four tablespoons now of pineapple puree. Oh. I almost got a facial. So now we just add same four tablespoons, two ounces. So there you go. Now we add the per vodka. Yes. Doesn't matter what brand you have. A per vodka, any kind of per vodka is good. Per vodka, six ounces. That's a good way to get your side order of uh, fruit every day. So, a squeeze of lemon. And by the way, the potatoes are ready. I thought you were going to go faster than me. Squeeze of lemon, now we add the ice. Potatoes are ready. Like. And it's pretty much three quarter full. It's very important that you use as much ice as possible because yes. your drink is not going to melt down. More no. ice you have and less is going to melt down. Here we go. It's very easy. You just give a tap to it five fast seconds. Like a friendly slap. I don't know if you slap friendly like that, but five seconds and Uno, shake it. Do it. Three, four, five. Here we go. We're ready to drink. Bobby will be happy by now. This is a strainer. It's used to strain the ice and the pulp out of your martini. Hold on, yeah, hold on. Look at this. Oh my god. This is delicious. Do you see how you, can you hear how crispy they are? Well, I've rose potato, you gotta give it your hand anyway. Oh, this is a Hot one Oh! The drink! Here, yeah. there is a drink waiting for you. Here we go, Fabio. A, li a little sip at the time, eh? Cheers, salute. Salute. Bye. Bye.